Hey, what's up guys? Sean back with another video and is the world's heaviest man past saving half ton dad. So this guy's the like weight of a Kia Rio, like half a Kia Rio at least. But uh yeah, I was getting up there too, 605. I know that ain't nothing to friggin' laugh at. It was bad, real bad. But now I'm down to the weight of about two kangaroos, which I saw this video like a few weeks ago where they're like this guy weighs as much as four kangaroos, and now I just think all Australian people weigh themselves in kangaroos. That's why I say that. But uh, let's see what's going on in this one. I'm way off topic today. Houston, we have a problem. The human race is getting larger and larger. 15 million Americans are morbidly obese. Two is it really 50 million of us? Damn, America, we down bad. We got to make our Big Mac smaller or something. A million weigh over 40 stone, classified as super morbidly obese. People have access to food all day long. There is food everywhere. Texas is home to six of the nation's most obese cities, with 64... I blame Bucky's for that, but also, what, 40 stone? A stone's 14 pounds, so that's over 560 pounds, so I would have fell into that category. ...percent overweight or obese. Hundreds of people have contacted us in the Houston area alone. Obesity is a super-sized problem in Houston, home of the world's largest teenager. It's like a prison that you just move around in. There's no excuse. He's a teenager? Well, the good news about that is you've got plenty of time to turn it around, so your story's only beginning to be written, and as long as you're still breathing, you're undefeated. That's how I look at it. Escape. Houston is also home to the heaviest man in the world's heaviest false? nation. In oh, my God. lifetime, this is the biggest human being that I have ever seen. At 73 stone, Kenneth Brumley has been bedbound for four years. Once the weight gets on you, it's hard getting it off. It's a sickness. I mean, you need help. Kenneth's only hope is... It's bad, but I was just laughing because he had like the little pink rag over like the tip of his knob. And I don't know why you wouldn't just let him see it. They're seeing everything else, but... Yeah, obviously, it's a very defeating moment. You feel like, like, it could be a beautiful day outside, the sun's shining, but that sun ain't shining for you. You will absolutely beat yourself up once you get to a point like that. Surgery at Houston's Renaissance Hospital. Kenneth is by far the heaviest patient that we have treated. My girly, older teenagers, it won't be long before they be getting married. I want to make sure I'm walking them down the aisle. This is the story of a father, his family, and a nation in the grip of a fast food epidemic, all in danger of eating themselves to death. That's right. Blame that little red-headed devil, Wendy. She's out here slinging bacon crack. Not be a four-month-old hamburger. Four months? Damn. That's a little young. One, two, three. The story begins in February 2007. At 64 stone, a desperate Rennie Williams was the world's heaviest woman. I want to be a candidate for gastric bypass surgery. I believe that I am the perfect candidate. The only place willing to take on a case of Rene's size was Houston's Renaissance Hospital. Hi, I am Dr. Lipson. Hi, how do you do? Renaissance Hospital is a center of excellence. The only one. Boo, we need Dr. Now, man. Who's this guy? Dr. Now is like the Voldemort of fat. Like, it's just scared to death of him. You don't even speak his name if you're in the Chubb Castle. That will do uh, patients more than 400 pounds. With Renee's operation a success, news networks were soon making her a nationwide celebrity. This is Renee. She weighs more than 850 pounds. Coming up, I'll tell you about the risky decision she made to save her own life. Renee's news story inspired other super morbidly obese people to plead for help via webcam. I've been fighting weight issues ever since I lost my mother. It's a fight. I'm never going to give up. I do need help. I like her attitude, but yeah, it absolutely you can always turn it around the only hole you can't dig yourself out of is the grave but it's hard to tell yourself that you're just not too far past saving once you get that big but i mean you can turn it around it's possible if you want it bad enough i've never really watched my weight that closely and it just 
got out of control. Today, Dr. Nazarden got a phone call hey. from a lady that is literally trapped in her house. The Renaissance has been inundated with new cases, like 45... That's what I'm talking about. Trapped in the house, send uh, Voldemort a fat right heel here. I'll vada cadabra the hell out of that chub. Five stone John Jordan, who broke records with a single abdominal section weighing over five stone. 76 pounds. No way. But by far the largest of all the new cases is Kenneth Brumley. When I see Renee's story, I knew I was a little bit about her size. If she got the help, somebody else could. So that's when I called around, hoping maybe I can get in touch with the same doctor. Well, I got into this uh, shape here probably in the last seven years. And it's probably been the last seven years have been the worst years of my life. It's like, I can't say it sneaks up on you, but to a point, you just get so far gone, you stop caring. So I guarantee it got to the point where he was still mobile and all this and that. And he was like, man, I'm already like 200 pounds overweight. What's an extra 300? Like, eh, it gets away from you real fast once you stop caring. So like I'm a, a prisoner, prisoner to, to myself. I just basically just sit here in my routine. It's sit in the bed, watch TV and eat. Welcome to Fat Block. Every day it's the same routine. The only little sunshine I get is when the window is open. 40-year-old Kenneth has four daughters, and after separating from his wife, has been living with a new partner for seven years. I wasn't eating right, I wasn't exercising. The next thing I know, the weight just piled up on me to where I just would sit in the... Oh, this guy... Oh, he must have hooked up with somebody like James King's friggin' woman or something. Like, you know, like the honey bun humper, get bigger for me, yes please. Like, I need to see glazing dripping down your chin. It's turning me on. Like, that probably is what happened here. Blow and stay, stay in the house all day. If you get uncomfortable or short of breath, let us know early. Right. Don't wait until you're in trouble. Let's Try a diet. You're always short uh, of breath. Did the exercise that I could do from the bed, but you lose 20, 30 pounds, and then that's about it. Then you gain that back twice more. I hope to have a gastro bypass, because uh, I think that would be a... A big help to me, and I know it'll change my life in a big way. No way I'm gonna improve like this. Okay, I'm gonna pull Blake back, okay? Mattress is dirty now. Don't worry about it. I don't want nobody else. Okay, don't worry about it. It's okay. Kids, what? Damn, I know I say like thick thighs save lives, but them puppies is thick. Like those are beanbag thighs. His balls must be screaming for help. Cause when you get that big and your thigh. You squish them suckers left and right. He was in bad shape. Literally. His bed had broken from underneath him. He'd been on the floor a long time. He hadn't been out of the house in four years. He couldn't even move his leg. And the only thing he could do, move his hand and move his head from side to side. I'm sorry. I know it's going to be a little uncomfortable. The family was bringing the food and take care of his personal need. Well, naturally, when you see your child in distress, it bothers you. He was a prisoner in his own body, couldn't do anything. Basically, he came to realize that uh, he wanted a life. You are a prisoner, like, but you've done it to yourself. you got to understand that you can't really blame other people. Other people might have contributed, like bringing you food and stuff, because obviously you're bed bound. But you gotta take some accountability here. Like, I obviously know I did it to myself. Like, I didn't blame anybody else. It's all on me. The first thing that I noticed uh, before we even hit the garage was the smell. It just smelled like a huge baby diaper. I've never seen a thousand pound person before, but it's quite a sight when we saw it. Let take you catch, take your moment, breath. catch your breath, okay? Yo. He was ready for death. And he wanted to live. He wanted to dance. He wanted to work but he was trapped in his body. It was hard for me to see him. I'd pay good money to see this dude try to do the chicken dance or something. Dun, 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 dun. You know what I'm talking about? I'm just laying there. Try to stay as active as I can. I don't, I don't want to end up down that road. I don't want to gain too much weight. We're rolling towards you so we can put this uh, tarp underneath him, okay? The thing that came to my mind first of the situation was how were we going to get someone the size of Kenneth, even from his bed area, onto a stretcher? Kenneth has been immobile for years. Even the smallest movement causes extreme discomfort and could trigger a heart attack. Everybody ready? 
Yeah. One, One, two, two three. three. Oh, I'm gonna get the oh, start again. Oh, I, I, I got the tarp oh. down. Get the tarp down there. Get the tarp down there. No, it's the tarp right down here. Okay. Man, could you imagine what the guy that's right under his butt is smelling right now? Because he ain't been up from that spot in, what, seven years? So you have to imagine a wicked case of swamp ass is going on. So they push him up, and that guy just gets full blast, like, foom, like... They could use that for chemical warfare at that point, man. Breathe. Breathe. Hang on. Okay. Hold on. Let him back. Let him back down. Can't breathe. Oh. Okay. Breathe. 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 One, two, three. All right. Hold on, hold on. Hold Thank on. you. Hold on. Hey, right there. Beautiful. Come on down. Good job. This is the biggest human being that I have ever seen. You see somebody like that, and, and once they get bad, then they get worse and then worse and worse, and the people then lose track of themselves, and they get so desperate, they, they just don't know what to do anymore. And they all it's a sense of giving up on yourself. It really is. And you're just so defeated. And I know I felt this way. I would put on a good show and, like, let people think I was happy. But, man, it's tough. It, it really beats you up and eats you alive. Because you're sitting there thinking, how could this be my life? How did I do this to me? But there's always a better hope for tomorrow if you just try. Start, like, focusing on every day being a better version of yourself. All they think about is death. What's your name? Are you covered up? Yeah. Yes, sir, you're covered. You're covered up. I don't know how to say if it's a, an addiction, but once that weight gets on you... I mean, what do you mean you're covered up? You can't see nothing. Your thighs are choking your balls out. They're in like a figure four headlock or something. It's hard getting it off. The weight stopped me from enjoying my life with my kids. One, two, three. It's a sickness. I mean, you need help. I don't go back to work. Just as long as I'm active, doing something. All right, ready? One, two, three. There we go. All right. Good. 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 Hey, man. Uh, Take that blanket. Uh, throw it uh, on the bed. This one? Yeah. Yeah. No. That's right. Blanket. 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 Come on the bed. Come Just back. keep Just breathing with me. Right. Okay. In yeah. through the nose. Out through the mouth. There you go. In through the nose again. Come on. I know. I know. Come on. Here. Here's my hand, brother. Squeeze my hand. It's okay. Come on. I got you. All right, we're just gonna Could you imagine how, like, his joints feel? Because he's laid there still for so long. Like, any kind of motion is going to hurt like hell. Turn him on his side. The man sack that they had him in was rated at, like, a 1,000 pounds, so it was pushing his weight. Probably one of the worst things that could have happened, it would have tore, you know, could have wedged him in the doorway, and then we would have had a real problem. Watch out, watch out, Tearing watch your sack sounds bad. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying. Oh, here. Oh, up. Up. Right what they're going to do is basically cut us a bigger passage. We can't get through the uh, door jams because it's, it's too narrow. So we're going to cut a wider uh, area opening so that we can get them out of here. There was no way he was going to make it through that door since he was. I mean. I've slid sideways through some damn doors before, don't get me wrong, but the second you have to do demolition because you've gotten too big, like, that's when shit gets real. You should really be scared if, like, I can't get out of this room, I'd panic, man. I don't know, like, it's not like I was out traveling the world or anything, but if I couldn't walk out of a room, I would feel even more trapped in that moment. Oriented right there by the garage, it was just a lot easier to take the garage supports out since it wasn't a load-bearing wall then it actually cut onto the outside wall I did let this get out of hand if I had a chance to go back to it, uh, I'll never do it again. You okay with all this? Yeah. In my years in the fire service, I have seen some rather large people, but by far and away, Kenneth was the largest in weight, 
times. I believe Kenneth knew that once he left that room, he was going to some place that could help him and would be better off for him. Yeah, I mean, the guy seems like he's in better spirits than a lot of people that we've seen on My 600 Pound Life. But when you're up there at a thousand pounds, I gotta imagine that it's just a hopeless feeling. Because I know some of how hopeless I felt, but to get to that point, like, add an extra 400 to where I was, I couldn't imagine what he's going through. And with a family, and as a man, you want to protect your family, right? But you can't do anything. You're just stuck. Well, you can turn it around, but you know what I mean by in that moment, you can't. If somebody broke in, good luck, buddy. You're just stuck there. You can't do shit. The most important thing to me about this is getting back on my feet. I got my four biological daughters. So I miss most of their childhood life. So now they young ladies. I wanted to be there when they get married and they got kids. I wanted to still be a part of their life. No pain, no gain. Let's get out of here. Kenneth's life hangs in the balance. At 73 stone, his body may not withstand the stress of his forthcoming surgery. Can I hey, what's 73 stone? That would be da -da -da, 700, 7 times 4, 280. Okay, that's 980 right there, I think, right? He's definitely the largest patient that we've ever had in our facility. He has expressed an interest in having a gastric bypass. No, he that. also knows that that is his only hope for ever having any kind of normal life, much less living. I think it's 1,036. I think I did some bad math there. I forgot the Any period of time. There is also concern for the next patient on the critical list, the world's heaviest teenager, still trapped at home. I really don't want to end up not being able to get out of this chair one day or, or worse. He should be dating. He should be kissing girls. The simplest things in life he's missing. Yeah, I mean, as a teenager, your libido's out of control. So he probably is sitting there thinking about all that stuff, spending a lot of time on the Chub Hub. But, I mean, yeah, he can turn it around. He's still so young. He's got tons of opportunity and chance. Constant struggle just to do the basic things that a person should do. It's like a prison that you just move around with. Need chapstick, buddy. What happened? Go! 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 I had a pretty good childhood. I was uh, athletic. We did a lot of high school sports, neighborhood sports. So I was constantly in the basketball or football, baseball. Oh, no! I ate a lot when I was a child, a whole lot. But I burnt all that off with the activities that I was doing. At 18, Kenneth moved from Texas to California and started a family. This period marked the beginning of his weight gain. I mean, but he knows what it's like to be like a healthy size. I never got there, man. I started getting fat from the time I was five. But he knows that, like, I don't know how you how you let yourself get that far gone if you know, ah, uh, maybe. I moved out there and I didn't know nobody. So that made pretty sense. much all the sports activity I was doing stopped. I was 19 when my first daughter was born. After that time, I had three more daughters. We went a lot of places with them. He actually did a lot of stuff when we were younger. He laughs a lot, so I guess he's a pretty much happy person and fun to be around. And he likes to joke around a lot, so it's pretty cool. One. I'll say, when you get, like, bigger like that, you kind of use your sense of humor as, like, a guard or, like, armor. I joke about everything because I think it makes dealing with the hard stuff a lot easier. Two, three. Out in California, there's a lifestyle that it wasn't too good to raise a family in, so I started hanging with the wrong people, and my personality started to change. Uh, so I got involved with the gangs out in L.A and everything the gangs did, I was involved in. That led to- Damn, I'm just picturing this guy running down on somebody on the block. You better be scared for your damn life. You pull up to a friggin' in and out and see Buddy coming straight out at you? No way, no thank you. That would hurt. People shooting at me with my daughter in the car. That's why it led to the thing with my wife taking the kids and we separating. Estranged from his family, Gang life quickly took over. 
this new lifestyle had a huge impact on Kenneth's size. One, two. We was always on the go, doing things we had no business doing, so we was always eating fast food. I mean, every day we would wake up. You're going to tell me that gangbanging made you gain weight? How in the hell, man? Unless you were like a Krispy Kreme dealer or something. But it's, no, that don't make any damn sense. That's a very active, like, active lifestyle. You get active out there, so I don't see that one, man. That's crazy. Cup, we'd go get chili cheese fries for breakfast. Basically, it was just fast food 24-7. Never a home-cooked meal or, you know, veggies or anything. Just always junk food and a lot of beer. Okay. But I was drinking probably maybe a case a day of malt liquor. So yeah. that was just piling on the pounds. I noticed that my stomach was getting big, but I still was just drinking and drinking and drinking. Okay, buddy, after a couple of more rolls, we're going to leave you alone and take a nap. I think you deserve it. What do you think? You know how many times I went to the store and had to buy different pants and come back two weeks later and had to buy a size bigger, two sizes bigger? Damn, like two weeks or a week? That's pretty quick to be jumping up sizes, but... I mean, if he was eating out like that, like nonstop fast food, I guess I could see it at that point, so. Bigger, because I was just picking up the weight that fast. Then at that point, I like, I called my mom and told my mom, and she told me to come on home. Never thought it would get that bad to where it would make me, you know, bed bound. Dark years, a few dark years. That's when I noticed it, when he came home, because I hadn't seen him in a long time. And when I saw him, it was, like two or 300 pounds more. Hundreds of morbidly obese patients have been successfully treated by Dr. Nauzarden. Kenneth's only hope rests with his pioneering work. Okay, yeah, I was right. I think I said like 1030 something, but Dr. Now, if, if there's anybody that can save you, that's the man, but you're gonna have to save yourself, man. Like he can't do it for you. But I think he's got all the reason in the world to want to change, so hopefully he's got this. Dr. Nazarda. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. It's kind of cold there. Kenneth was eating everything, specifically a lot of it. These people that are super morbid obese, they are not simply overeating. They have a normal metabolism. They cannot control it. Have you tried your diet? Yes, I've tried the, the low calorie diet, the, the low carbs, mm -hmm. the grapefruit diet. Grapefruit diet and stuff, they worked. I, I lost some pounds, but then I gained it back. You could diet. You do, like, I'll say you try, like, crash diets where you lose some weight, but you gain it right back the second you start eating the way you were. I don't know. I've never had like a metabolism like I've never had that tested. I'd be curious to see what mine was doing though. For the next couple of days, Kenneth is going to have a lot of blood drawn and some different diagnostic testing performed on him. Dr. Nalzarden is going to develop a plan of care for him. But Kenneth's current size makes gastric bypass surgery too risky. Between his legs are two gigantic deposits of fatty tissue, which grew slowly while Kenneth was lying on his back in bed. Now, this uh, swelling that you got in the, in the leg, how long has this been going on? A few years. Yeah. Damn, but Buddy's pretty flexible, though. I can't lie. He's been in a split for, like, years at this point. I don't know how he's doing that, because I ain't got that kind of flexibility. This guy's like a friggin' cheerleader out here. Kenneth weighs approximately a thousand pounds and has very large fat folds on the inside of both thighs that prevents his legs from actually coming together. He has some skin issues that's made it very difficult for him to get out of bed for the past four years. Kenneth has been unable to take a bath or a shower for over four years. Cleaning him is a major undertaking. It's horrible. I had a lot of skin breakage on the bottom of my legs and stuff, and the uh, skin was deteriorating just from not being taken care of good. When we see. I mean, that's four years of hooker bass, like just laying there with a little rag, so it ain't gonna be pretty, but I mean, what could people do? They couldn't get him up at home. They could try the best they could, I guess, but 
What are you supposed to do? Spray him down with a hose in bed? Like patients like this come in, we just do what we have to do. Can you imagine these people? The physical therapists, the nurses. Can you imagine them having to clean him every single day? Keep him sproused up. Keep his bed clean. All right, you ready? Wait, 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 wait. You gonna lift this one? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna lift them both. Keep his excrement and keeping his urine off of his wounds. Give me a. It's a major, major dedication. Hold on. Okay, sweetie. A lot of people might think, oh my goodness, how on earth could anybody let themselves get like that? Piece of cake. The only way that you get that big is you eat that big. What he does is he eats the equivalent of two weeks of food that you and I eat in one particular day well yeah i mean that'll do it what like fifteen thousand calories a day twenty thousand but i don't know a lot of people would look or ask me like how'd you do that how'd you let yourself get there like how'd he let himself get there and i'll say it's just it comes from like not caring anymore you just stop caring about yourself you're like ah oh, screw it like you're in a very sad place in that moment and I, if I was, like, to wear my heart on my sleeve or whatever, I'd be like, yeah, absolutely. There was probably some depression going on there. But I just kind of, like, put, pushed it to the side almost. I just pretended I was happy, even though I definitely wasn't. So I know that he's probably not happy. And he's using food to kind of mask that, I guess. But We do know that those patients generally take in around 30,000 calories a day. It'd be multiple hamburgers at one time. It'd be multiple pizzas at one time. It would be canisters of ice cream at one time. Every day, day after day. Oh, man. When I was probably at my heaviest weight, I probably would eat three or four cheeseburgers at a time. I'd probably drink a, maybe a half gallon of orange juice or apple juice or something. I don't think three or four cheeseburgers would get you there. Maybe 13 or 14, but that's over 1,000 pounds. I ate three or four. I was 600, so. I used to get the two liter bottle of sodas and I'd be through with that within 30, 40 minutes. And to me, that was eating light. It didn't take a lot to get a bunch of fast food. It didn't take a lot of money at all for that. I felt like Chinese or Mexican or McDonald's or Burger King, that's what I got. Ken, when he was weighing 1,030 pounds, I don't think that he was really able to get up and get the food that he wanted, right? But you know that he'd been eating that much, and obviously there was some enabler, some person. Eh, uh, I don't know about that. I think I've seen this guy in a Popeye's drive through or two with me, and I think we were shooting that new episode of, uh, what is it, drive through by the ton? Yeah, been there a few times. And that was basically giving him what he wants, and maybe uh, they gave it to him uh, to avoid him having a temper tantrum. <laughs> For the past seven years, Kenneth has lived with his partner, Serena. Caring for Kenneth while raising four teenage children has been a full-time job. How often do you have time for home cooking and how much time for fast food? What's kind of average week's food for you guys? Last week we was, was fast food out. <coughs> fast food all week? Mm -hmm. Yep. But this week, after my I cook, my, cook my some meals. You want this one? Kids like fast food. I mean, that's just all meat and cheese and whatever that was. That looked good to me, but I can't touch something like that. No wonder Buddy got up over a thousand pounds. The devil brings donuts and is right there. If they had a choice between a plate of vegetables and fast food, they're gonna choose fast food every time. I, I, I did. Thank you for letting us see this day. We do show love by giving food. We all do that. It's built in in some kind of way to show love through food. I want one of these. Thank you. Kenneth uh, has a loving family. His girlfriend and uh, his mother care for him, and they provide him with the food. They feel if they don't feed these people what they want or they ask for it, they're not loving him. I get that, because I feel like my mom kind of got, she was kind of like that. Like, 
I think she feels like she shows love by giving food, but she was raised by two alcoholic parents, so it makes sense with her just wanting to be more attentive like that, but at a certain point, it's more damaging than, like, helpful. While Serena was Kenneth's sole carer, his diet took a turn for the worse. His weight began to spiral out of control. Everybody in the house said unhealthy, but at least they was active. They can get around and, and move around, so they burnt it off. You can get just about anything off the fast food dollar menu and get plenty of it for a dollar. So it's I know this shit's old now, buddy, because the dollar menu's been gone for a long time. Inflation sucks, man. But also, yeah, I used to go on my lunch break and get five McDoubles. That was like my dinner break. And I had $5 in my pocket and a quarter. 5% sales tax in Maryland at that time. So that was all I needed. That dollar menu came in clutch quite a few times. It's, it's so cheap to eat unhealthy nowadays. People on lower incomes are the biggest consumers of fast food. Last year, Americans spent $110 billion on convenience food. Yo. More money than was spent on higher education. Oh, we're fat, fat, and stupid. Uh-oh, we're in trouble. When you're talking about 64% of, of Texans being obese, it's a pretty universal problem. We live in a very calorie-rich environment, and people become very sedentary. There is food everywhere. People have access to food all day long. There's so much carbohydrate, there's so much sugar that is available in the United States. One problem is the media and commercials on television that uh, get us uh, in a subliminal fashion. I ain't going to Big Daddy's barbecue getting any smoked wieners. None of that. And people think about being hungry all the time and they want to just go out and eat all of that. Fast food is strictly off the menu for Kenneth. He needs to lose a massive amount of weight in order to survive surgery. Has His calorie though? consumption has been reduced from 30,000 calories a day to 1,200. I get this two times a day, every day since I've been here. A salad, which I don't mind, but they only give you one kind of sauce. And it's not my kind of sauce that I like. But he's like, pile the ranch on that sucker. Yeah, Dr. Now brought in his diet. And I've seen a video of somebody trying his diet. It looks rough to me. I ain't got the cojones to try it. It would be pretty funny if I did because I'm a texture queen. I'm weird about textures. So, yeah, I I'll gag if I try to eat that tomato. Like, I love ketchup. Tomatoes, gag, man. After 40 days on a strict program of diet and exercise, Kenneth has lost 12 stone. It's a remarkable turnaround. Basically, I want to be up and about because my girls are older teenagers now, so it won't be long before they be getting married. I want to make sure I'm... Yeah, but if we had used any of these rubbers beforehand, we wouldn't have, like, six kids running around. But all right, buddy, go off. Walking them down the aisle. That's one of my main goals, to make sure that I'm around for them when they get married. He lost a lot of weight. Like, he's doing real good. He's real happy about it. You can see that he he's fart? more happier that he's going to be coming out soon. While Kenneth starts on the road to recovery, the hospital's latest case, a 57-stone teenager, is still trapped at home. Billy is a great kid. He's very young, and that is the one good thing. We've caught him now. But Billy is nervous about seeking treatment. Angie is on a mission to reassure him. Imagine, like, nowadays, because he would have, like, jumped on the fat positivity movement and been like, I love me at every size. I'm big and beautiful. La, la, la. You can lick my chub. Like, it, it, it's just insanity. But luckily, he's young. Luckily, it's early enough that uh, people were not as accepting. But, I mean... You just got to work on yourself. Be the best you you can be. So he's got a lot of chance here to turn this around. Hi, hey, Angie. How are you doing? Come on in, darling. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Nice to see you. The team at the Renaissance Hospital has never seen a teenager as large as their latest patient. Billy's mother believes his size is due in part to the death of their first son. I'm overcompensated oh, after losing Matthew, my first child. When you lose a child, 
part of you dies. You good? Yes, ma'am. I have Diet Dr. Pepper if you want that. No? I'm fine. I've overcome. That's sad because I could imagine he just filled that void from his brother with food. But man, you're, you're rocking the belly table. Like, it's good that you're looking for help. But mom's sitting here like, you need Dr. Pepper? You need anything? If I'm being honest, my mother would kind of probably play that same role. Compensated with Billy. I tried to buy him everything possible that I could afford. And of course, I fed him. He didn't get that size by himself. Yep. In the morning, he likes cereals. Of course, that's a large bowl. And then maybe 11 o'clock, if I have like anything left over, I fix him a big plate of it. Around dinner time, around six or seven, you know, I fix him another large plate, vegetables, meat, potatoes. That's his downfall too, loves potatoes and hamburgers and hot dogs and all the good stuff. It's the buying out, I think, that's done most of the harm. Like when he eats a hamburger, he doesn't eat like a hamburger, he has to have two. And then a large fry and a large Coke, two foot long hot dogs, uh, two hamburgers or three, depending, double meat. Damn, buddy's a meat fiend out here. All he's eating, like all these burgers, glizzy goblin. Like, Mom, you need to chill. He's a teenager. Uh, maybe she's just doing this because the loss of her first son, she just turned all that love and attention to him and spoiled the hell out of him. So, from my mom's perspective, I could see how she got there. But it's just, it's kind of sad to see it get to this, like, point. At least I was older in life when I started hitting those kinds of numbers. But I probably was about... 400 somewhere around 400 i don't know the scale didn't go up there and i didn't pay attention so somewhere around 418 meat triple meat so it's quite a lot of food put it right here the merlin he's able of meat. to go to the bathroom he's able to wipe himself but i still have to bathe him because he has such an overhang here that i have to go up and i have to clean and lift that and it's extremely heavy and i have to wash him during the summer, I, uh, I don't think I could deal with my mom like loofahing my fupa. Like I couldn't do it. No, buddy. And sitting here rubbing his feet, like ew. Somebody's turned on by this right now. You guys love feet. I know it. You feet fiends. I freaking. I bought it. a large swimming pool. That's how he's bathed in the summer. I do everything for him. You know, he's my baby. Are you okay? Yes, sir. I'm fine. I couldn't have made it this far without my mom. She's really helped me. Uh, you know, there's a whole lot, lots of stuff I'd love to do that I regret I can't do now. Hanging out with my friends, going out to movies, or going out somewhere to eat, or going on dates, you know, going to parties. Angie is making this visit to help Billy's parents understand how his life could be transformed by gastric bypass surgery. We need Billy to bond with our patients, so he'll have those friends to count on. Yeah, I want him in a we had like a support group type thing too when you have the surgery, but I'll be honest, I never joined it because I like I do better kind of dealing with things on my own. I don't mind sharing my experience because it probably helps somebody else. But if you guys need like kind of like weight loss support, we do have a Discord in the description. People are real supportive there, and they always are like talking about their weight loss, their progress. It's a good place to be. Tuxedo, I want to see him dance. He's never danced. It's a constant struggle just to do the basic things that a person Tip should do. do the toilets. There was a point where I just figured, you know, I would lose weight sooner or later. I always thought that, but I mean, it's really hard just to come out and tell people about that. Damn, I know he don't get out of that chair often because his booty has turned into the chair. And also he must've been baking a pizza or something because either that or he's got like a blow problem. I don't, I don't know. How'd he get all that on his butt, you know? It's, it's like a prison that you just move around with. It's gotta be flour. <sighs> There's no escape. And with the weight, it, it ends up destroying you. It takes your life away. It takes away the things we're supposed to do. It's sad because it's it's a very defeated feeling. So I know how he feels, but you you could turn it around, buddy. Like this this doesn't define you. You're still so young with so much like chance for change and opportunity. But I can imagine from his perspective, it's just total defeat. You you feel that way. You feel totally defeated. Nobody can save you. Like 
but you just take it one day at a time like okay i'll be a better me today a better me the next day and before you know it you stack up you get somewhere i'm still working on it sometimes i defeat myself in a day and i'm sitting there like man i just don't feel good today but then i remember like you just have to be a better you than you were yesterday and you just keep trying to move forward that way i'm sorry well good morning also this is like a side note but he's a teenager and they're talking about girls and this or that so he's kind of screwed with short arms so uh i imagine he is very frustrated to say the least can morning. how are you this morning him morning. too I'm all right okay well today is the day that we're gonna do the surgery on you the procedure we're gonna do is gonna include taking this fatty tumor that you have uh, and be able to get you to the point that you'll be able to stand. Yeah, that'd be great, Doc. One, two, three. Oh, good move. Good wonderful, move. wonderful. Kenneth has had to lose 12 stone in order for Dr. Nauzarden to perform the first operation. Damn, so 12 stone, what's that, 168 pounds? But once they get rid of that fat there, he'll have to, he'll get to stop doing the nutcracker thing. So it'd probably feel a lot better. But at 61 stone, the potential risk remains high. The fatty tumors inside Kenneth's thighs must both be removed. This will enable his legs to come together and bear his weight. Just to see Kenneth become a normal person. The team had planned to remove the fatty tumors from both legs, but they're so large that five hours in, only the tumor on Kenneth's right leg is detached. Good God. Surgery yes. Surgery's over. Hey. You doing all right? Yeah. Okay, he did very good. Yeah, we only work on the right leg. It took us like five hours to do. We took like uh, 47 pounds off of his right leg. In the months leading up to his gastric bypass operation, Kenneth must first endure further surgical procedures. Today we're going to work on this leg and get these extra skin off of it. Fatty deposits are removed from his other leg and abdomen, reducing his body weight by a total of 15 stone. Will it be enough for Kenneth to get up and walk? All right. You gotta take the small victories. Even that is a victory in and of itself. You have uh, some better dine to put on it, a new sporting, and we're gonna leave it open. After three months in hospital, Kenneth's finally ready to try and take his first steps in four years. All right, Kenneth, I want you to show me how you can exercise your legs. I'm ready to give it a try. It's been up for three years. Today is going to be history. Show all the world he can walk. It's only done now. I gotta show there. myself I can walk first. Have a faith. Okay. For Kenneth, every step will be a step closer to going home. Just hang on to it for just a second, get your salt ready. But whether his wasted muscles can take the strain is another matter. Yeah, I mean, his legs would be extremely atrophied, but you, you gotta try. He's in good spirits, and that's shocking to me, because I, I didn't even, I, I don't think I was nearly that positive at that point. Because he's still up there in weight, but... This guy, like, something about him just kind of draws me in. I like this guy. I like his, like, he seems good and, like, just kind most of the time. But I was very, I, I don't know. It's a dark place to be, for sure. One, two, three. Good oh, man. Man. All right. All right. You got it. Oh, let me back. Let me back. Okay. Oh. Oh. My lower back. Before Kenneth can even sit up, his back muscles go into spasm. Pushing too hard could cause him serious injury or worse. It's a huge setback. In two years, that's the first time your feet touch the ground. Come on, that's good. You ready to go back to bed? 
I mean, it just felt like uh, this was something I had to do because everybody was expecting it. And then not to be able to do it, it's a big letdown to me. I was just hoping uh, you know, I can go and get up because it's the first step towards me getting back home to my family. I'll tell you what, you feel like you're letting everyone down, but the, the only person you need to really worry about is you in the moment because you're really in the fight of your life. So I could understand the feeling of letting people down because I don't. you tend to get in your head and be your own worst critic when it comes to something like that. But no, you, you, you just need to worry about you in this moment. Be kind of selfish, but that's who matters. That's what's important in the moment. But you do have kids, so you have to think about them. But you just got to keep trying to do your best. That's all. But Kenneth, it must be kind of hard not being able to be very active. It would be for me. I would rather him be outside playing with me, getting active, but it was hard for me to see him just laying there. Hey, Ma. I didn't quite make it. Just too much on my the muscles around my chest. Kenneth needs to lose 30 stone and regain his mobility before Dr. Nauzarden will attempt a gastric bypass. We're going to continue doing uh, exercise with him. We just uh, have to wait till he feels his confidence is back and he's willing to try. So he wanted him to lose 420 pounds to get down to just above 600 before he would operate. Now, Dr. Now operates on people bigger than most mine said his strict limit was 550 he did me at something like 540 so yeah dr now is kind of he's more on the i don't know he's strict but he's he's pretty lenient when it comes to that i'd say the world's heaviest teenager billy robbins is due to undergo weight loss surgery at just 19 years old but he's nervous about going through with it billy mama's gonna fix you a sandwich Roast beef? Um, yes, ma'am. Yellow cheese? Uh, yes, ma'am. OK, then. All right. Uh, mustard, please. Mustard? All right. Easy on the mustard, though. I'm going to call this chick Miss Arby's as much as we have the meats freaking going on here. OK, babe. All right. Did he say light? Jesus Christ. Oh, he is a mayo boat. I don't know. You know, it's going to be difficult. That's what I'm hearing, you know, because he's going to have to make a life change mayo. with food. And it's going to be a life change for us, too, my husband and I, because we're going to have to learn to eat differently to uh, keep up with him, you know, because we can't have a pizza. Of course, I could afford to lose a few pounds, too. I'm going to go take this to him. There you go, sweetie. You sure you don't want the milk? I'm sure, Mama. You just going to have water? Yes, ma'am. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. I mean, of course, there's the fear of the surgery. I still have that deep worry that I might not wake up. I always feared that. I had a little fear of that, but at the same time, I was like, I really need this. So if you're not going to cut it out, I'll scoop the sucker out with a spork, man. Just, But mustard is good for when you're doing, like, low carb, because there's not any carbs in it, if I remember correctly. That, you know, I was going to have, like, a heart attack or something, or I was going to die because of my weight and... and I mean, it's just, it was always one fear after another. You need any wet rags or anything? That'd some wet be rags? Nice. Yes, ma'am. You want a bowl of ice with it? Some water? Sure. Or just the wet rags right now? Just the wet rags right now. Right now? Okay. Want Mama sit down here with you a little bit? Sure. Huh? Sure. Uh, I don't know how I would feel about my mom being between my legs like that, but I guess if he can't get up really, I, that, it's kind of weird. I'm gonna rub your feet. You don't want no cream, do you? No, no, no. I'm fine. You sure, baby? Yes, ma'am. I'm sure. Cause you know when you hurt, Mama hurts. I know. Maybe I'm not gonna leave you. I'm gonna be right here. I know, Mama. I'm scared to death. But I can't show that to Billy. I must smile and I must encourage him in everything that he does. I'm scared. You hear about people dying, but I've got to have my faith. I think that she's like so scarred from losing her first son that she's probably putting all the attention on him and like that's her baby. I almost feel like she would try to talk him out of the surgery just so he's more dependent on her. I'm not going to put that on her, but it's it's just like a weird gut feeling I have right now. Got to trust in that to get me through. I'm scared to death. Send him to the Voldemort of fat. 
Hey, Ken. How are you? How was your day? How much you weighed today? Uh, they did it yesterday. It was 631, 32, somewhere around 32. there. 32 to 632, if my math is good, that's 400 pounds. Oh, that's freaking awesome. I mean, they cut, what, 210 off? But losing that much weight? Hats off to you, man. That You're starting to take your life back. I couldn't be happier for the dude. Because I bet his kids feel awesome about that, too. Their dad's actually trying, finally. So 400 pounds in five months, huh? Yep. It's now a month since Kenneth's failed attempt to sit upright. Another failure today would be devastating. But the presence of his newly born granddaughter is spurring him on. Whew. Granddaughter. I was like, thank God. I was wondering how logistically he had another one. Like, she's sliding up in there with all that schmegma and everything. Ugh. You know, last time after what happened last night, set me back and took me a while. And now I got my inspiration back, so. Trying to get up. He wasn't quite ready for that. That caused a little setback. But he has strong willpower, and this is what he wants to do. No, let me grab no, it. I'm gonna get there you go. Good man. Good man. All right. Shoot, that's great, man. Okay. In five months, Kenneth has lost a remarkable 28 stone. With 40% less body weight, moving around is now much easier. He's doing everything. I don't know why, but every time I look at this guy, since he was talking about being in gang life and stuff, I just have this mental image of him being like Debo on the block, except like the fat version. So maybe we could call him Fbo, Fatbo. I, I don't know. I just got this crazy Friday image in my head of this guy running down on people with like a box of donuts in hand. Thing by himself. That's great. All right. Or fastly down. walking down on people. Down to 45 stone. Kenneth is close to getting gastric bypass surgery. You're doing very good. How does it feel, your feet in the ground? I think the last time you were here, you realized I was. Yeah. I took two steps back, now I feel I took three steps forward. So that puts me one step ahead. And we're going to put your food out there. You're going to have to walk to get it. That must mean I'm going to get something every day <laughs> well, I was able to sit up. It's the first time I've been able to sit up in a few years, you know. Positive attitude will go a long way when it comes to fighting something like this, so everything in life is perspective, man. If you can turn a negative into a positive in your head somehow, your day will just go better. I don't know. There's things that get me down and stuff, like about my body and the way it looks from losing the 307 pounds, but I just tell myself that, like, hey, this is a sign you've worked hard. Like, just don't look at it in a negative light, and it kind of turns your perspective around. Billy remains nervous <clears throat> about his forthcoming surgery. Dr. Nauzardin arranges for him to visit his clinic to meet Melissa, a former patient who once weighed 46 stone. This is oh. Billy Melissa. I'm Barbara, oh, Billy's mom. Hi, Billy. Nice to meet you. Dr. Nauzardin did my bypass two years ago. I was 653 pounds. I was terrified. But I would never in my life it's the best decision I ever made in my life. You have the world's best surgeon who's offering to operate on you. Well, I want you to show him this. Uh, this was me. This is actually two days before the surgery. That's her? Okay. So, yeah, that just proves right there. Doctor Now is the fat slayer, baby. You heard of Demon Slayer? We got the fat slayer. Your body is not you. And if you don't get out, then you're going to be trapped forever. If you say no, you're passing up an opportunity of a lifetime. Yes, ma'am. I know what it is. He doesn't want to leave the security of his home and the comfort and everything, baby. Shut Billy up, was one scared person. He wanted to take a year off and just try the diet on himself. But he knew in his heart he couldn't do that. Even when I went to the doctor that day, still I had my doubts. But when I saw that, how it has helped so many other people. The point was that I didn't want to end up in your dead. You feel good? It's the best decision I ever made, but there can be negative outcomes. I see that in the comments a lot. People are like, I had the surgery, da-da-da, it's done this, that, and more medical issues than ever. 
but I, I didn't have that experience so far. Mine's been fairly positive outside of like acid reflux and GERD, I think I had. But yeah, I had kidney stones too, I think once or twice, but I didn't go to the hospital. I just kind of did my thing and it hurt a little bit. Good about it? Yes, sir. Whatever needs to be done, no matter how long it needs to take, I will do it. It's yeah, gonna really. be hard. It's going to be hard. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's gonna be hard, but it's gonna be worth it. Yes, ma'am. And I want him to start living his life. Because yes, I'm gonna have to cut the apron strings, and I'm gonna have to just tough up and see him walk out the door and do his thing. You can be the president of the United States of America. I want all those things for you, but I want you to, if you want them, I want you to be able to get. Oh, I knew he looked familiar. That's friggin' Trump. I found him. And your size not hold you back in your health. Okay. I'm, I'd like Honey. to do it. I would. You okay? Yes, ma'am. That's just clicked in my head. You just can't sit here forever. I'm pretty excited about going through this and changing my life. With Billy's mind made up, Dr. Nausarden will make arrangements to receive him at Renaissance Hospital as soon as possible. Buddy's pretty flexible, though. Hi. Hey, good morning. How are you? You doing all right? Today, Kenneth's gastric bypass surgery will finally go ahead. Absolutely, we have been. We will. Man, I'm so happy for this guy. Like normally, you see a lot of people kind of mess up, not go down the right path right away. This guy was just absolutely at rock bottom, and he's making the right choices and turning things around. It just goes to show you that you're never too far gone, because that's the first thing you think when you get that big. At least I know that's how I felt. So. Okay. Even though Kenneth's body weight has dropped from 73 to 42 stone, this remains a high-risk procedure. When the world's heaviest woman, Renee Williams, had this surgery, she weighed 64 stone. The operation was a success, but tragically, two weeks later, she suffered a massive heart attack. To maximize Kenneth's chances of recovery, Dr. Nausarden plans to perform the operation in stages. We're gonna do a two-stage gastric bypass that simply is reducing the size of stomach uh, to help him to control his appetite and eating habit. You come a long way. I want to be sexy and cute. You can do it in stages. If you're gonna go in and do it in the first place, why not just fully do it? That doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. He's the doctor. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put the big uh, scope in the stomach to use it as a tube so we can do the gastrectomy. Kenneth undergoes laparoscopic surgery. A camera is fed down his throat while lights and surgical tools are inserted through holes in his abdomen. You can hold the camera from the other side. His stomach will be reduced to the size of an apple, forcing him to feel full after just a few mouthfuls. They told me, like, the size of an egg, but, yeah, you take a few bites, you're full at first. But it stretches back out after a while. I can eat a little more now, but I still feel very full very fast. Hey. How y'all doing? Well, Kenneth's surgery went very good. He did fine, and surgery was excellent, no problem. I remember when I woke up from, like, the upper endoscopy, I, I asked the surgeon, I was like, why am I in Sesame Street or something like that? You're tripping like crazy when you wake up from this. And I've heard nurses say you say the funniest stuff and get, like, crazy flirty after that. He's not a bad-looking guy if he uh, just take care of himself. <laughs> One month later, mm. Kenneth makes an attempt to stand. It will be the first time in four years, if he can make it. Well, that's oh, let's good. go, Kenneth. Kenneth. You're doing all that without any help. Oh, right. Yes. 
okay, let's go. That's good, man. Like, the fact that he'd been laying there that long, I don't know. I just feel super happy for the guy, even though it was just up and down. But I feel happy for him. That's a lot to accomplish for somebody that's over a thousand pounds. Progress is getting better and better. I mean, it might take a few more months, but I know that I'm eventually gonna be back on my feet. It's been a long time since I had fresh air, actual fresh air where I can just sit outside and enjoy it. Everybody's waiting for me to get out and come home. I hear that every day, when you coming home? Did this guy have the same tattoo as the rock on his arm? Like, wait till you see it. it looks, it's that little bull or whatever. Ah, uh, you're not gonna see it again. Gotta go back. Hi, Jen. Hey. Hey, y'all. Come on in. Nice Christmas. Damn. Damn. See, y'all don't brought gifts, huh? <laughs> Food. Whole gang. It smells good. Kenneth's strict diet is relaxed for Christmas. Uh, I didn't even. I don't think I relaxed for Christmas. Everybody else was eating like snacks and stuff. I think I ate a little bit of mashed potatoes. That was it. Maybe some stuffing. I'm gonna make it last. I'm gonna save for this. Mm. Starting to get full already. It's heavy. If they make the smaller stomach. You can only hold so much. It don't take much to get you full. All right. I like this. Cowboys. <laughs> Cowboys. Number one. All being well, Kenneth will rejoin his family at home in a few weeks. His challenge will be not only sticking to his new diet, but helping his family change their eating habits too. I, don't know, I usually feel like you could tell when somebody's going to fall off the wagon and I, this guy doesn't give me the kind of vibes where he would go home and just kind of cheat. I think he's on it. He's good to go. Pounder. My granddaughter, she's five months now, so I hope she don't get into that weight thing, don't have a weight problem like I had or anything. You would not feed a four-month-old a hamburger. You should not. I've never heard of it. That's way too damn young. Eight months ago, Kenneth Brumley weighed 73 stone. Over nine months in hospital, he lost 35 stone, almost half his body weight. But as Kenneth's journey nears its end, Billy's is about to begin. Senior 15 to ladder 56, you can come on down about three or four houses. Houston's emergency services are in full attendance outside the home of 57 stone teenager Billy Robbins. You gotta take him off in a criminal care unit? I didn't know they went all like CSI on a friggin' fat guy like that. I never got to do any of this fun stuff, man. I want the SWAT team to come get my big ass. Whenever you're ready. Billy's legs can still carry him, but rarely further than the bathroom. The physical strain of today's hospital journey means he must be closely monitored at all times. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, we got one person driving the car. I love you. Yes, sir. Uh, Billy's stay in hospital will be the first time he's been separated from his mother. <laughs> it's vital Billy has moved quickly. His body is not used to being on its back so the strain on his vital organs is a major concern. Hi, Billy. <laughs> How are you? Hard. <laughs> Why, you didn't get any sleep last night? No, sir. How come? I worry the, the usual. OK. Damn, buddy is zonk. They hit him with some of the good stuff. He's out of it. Billet situation right now is very critical. He is 19 and he has pushed his way to the limit that is uh, overdriving his heart and lung. So he's gonna need help now or probably his lifespan is very short. Got a skin irritation, huh? Yes, sir. For the hospital to perform life-saving surgery, Billy will need to lose 30 stone over the next few months. For Kenneth, however, the hospital stay is finally over. I want two Junior Bacon Cheeseburger.
Oh, for... Come on, lady. This guy's the friggin' like... Oh my god, the Wendy's Wonder Woman right here. Why? Why are you going to get... I mean, I, I understand he don't have to eat it, but the guy got up over a thousand pounds. A Baconator's gonna be a big draw for him. What you want? And I want two Frosty Floats. Keeping Kenneth's new diet on track will be a challenge, but everybody back home is really excited about his return. Got me up to this stuff. It's definitely been hard. Without him being at home, it's not as much fun. It's like, it's kind of boring. When he's there, we always have something to do. Okay. Well, I know when he gets back. Uh, what do you do? He was friggin' bedbound. You guys playing tag? Cause that would be friggin' boring. Hide and seek? He's under the sheet. Like, I found him. It's gonna be in a different diet and all, but I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm looking forward to him coming home a lot. I hope he loses more weight and is able to walk again. It won't be that hard for him to stay focused. He's pretty dedicated to it. Hi, right, everybody. I love my nurses, too. They were so nice. I always have fun in the hospital with the nurses. They're just fun to, like, chat shit and mess around with. But he's trying to lose pounds, and they're picking up all the quarter pounders. That's not really a good mix. For everything we thought you. Yeah, that's totally right. <laughs> Yeah. Heavy duty <laughs> you imagine last time I was in an ambulance, I took this whole space in. I got to set goals and I got to achieve them goals because I feel if I fail at any of them goals, it could send me back into a downward spiral. So keeping my diet is the first thing. The memory. I will say that there's a fear that like you're going to spiral back to where you were, but as long as you just keep working in the right direction day by day, I haven't really found that point yet where I'm like terrified of it, but I just don't want to go back. So memories of weighing 73 stone and being cut out of his house a year earlier still haunt Kenneth. My granddaughter, she's five months now, so I hope she don't get into that weight thing, no have a weight problem like I had or anything. You ain't going to pay no attention to People talk about weight running in the family. Do you worry about your own weight? It doesn't really affect my day-to-day -day thinking. I really don't think about it. I just pretty much eat what I want when I want. Would you ever worry about yourself ending up in a position like your dad? I try not to think of that so it doesn't happen. Damn, she looks like the one lady from My 600 Pound Life. I can't remember her name, but maybe she was on a later episode. Like, Doctor Now had the whole damn family. I think a lot of what we sing is just ignorance. People, in order to eat properly, have to be taught to eat properly. What they're saying is that True. for the first time, that the life expectancy of our children will be less than that of ourselves. And that's related to obesity and the medical problems that obesity creates. Genetics is a loaded gun for morbid obesity, but the environment pulls the trigger. For many Americans, fast food remains the easiest, most affordable, and most desirable option. Yeah, I mean, I ate so much fast food. It's really dangerous, because if you just keep eating fast food, obviously you're going to gain weight. But you can make better options and just try better things. You don't have to go to friggin' Wendy's or, like, Burger King. You could just go home, you know, even if you just made yourself a burger, ate one without the bun, like, there's better options out there. It's a multi-billion dollar industry that's expanded year on year for three decades. You see a lot of people who say that a person should control what they eat, but it's easier said than done. I mean, if you look at TV nowadays, every five minutes is somebody showing some kind of food or hamburgers or chicken, and, and it's just constantly in your face 24-7. America is eating itself to death at an alarming rate, and the fastest growing category of obesity is also the most serious, super morbid obesity. Kenneth is a... Yeah, I mean, that's sad, but let's hear the last they have to say. The largest patient that Renaissance has done so far. Do I think Kenneth is gonna always hold that record? No. 
No, somebody will beat it. That's just the way it goes. I don't know. I think somebody has, actually, but... As far as weight loss goes, you'll get in your own way so many times. You'll be your own harshest critic. You just got to start putting in the work and slowly but surely, just by day after day of just trying to be better and better and better, you'll start putting it together. And a lot of good days will turn into like one really great like weight loss. So just do it time, like little by little time, like take your time, but obviously just keep working. Because the road to success is always under construction, so you just have to get to work. And just keep working and working and working. But that's the heaviest man who was path saving, who did an awesome job and I couldn't be happier for. And the heaviest teen, I don't know what's going on with him. There might be a video on him coming in the future. But alright guys, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see y'all later. Peace.